Welcome to the YNTA AY Minis. I'm Chris Smith. Hello, everybody. I've been trying to do this episode for forever because today I am reviewing Miss Saigon, which is currently on its North American tour throughout North America, which is why we call it the North American tour. And would you believe it's October right now? And I saw this thing August 8th, 2018 at the Pantages Theater. And you know, I saw it right after I got back from my New York trip. So I was doing my reviews of Broadway shows, which by the way, I still haven't done my review of Beetlejuice, but I had pushed that to October because it's a little scary and I wanted it to be more in the Halloween season. And, um, so, Miss Saigon, poor thing, just kept getting pushed and pushed, and it's not because I don't enjoy Miss Saigon. In fact, come here, look. I got this beautiful poster of Miss Saigon when I was at um, the show. And um, I have another Miss Saigon poster somewhere, but this is the poster that they're selling now. The epic love story of our time. Is it really of our time? Because, you know, it's a period piece. And it's set uh, at the end of the Vietnam War, as you know. It's um, based on Madame Butterfly, the, the Puccini opera. And Miss Saigon um, started in London. And then, of course, it was on Broadway from like 1991, I do believe until, yes, it opened April 11th, 1991, and it played until, I think, January of 2001. And it is still the 13th longest-running musical in the history of Broadway. So, bravo, Miss Saigon. My sister saw it one time when we were there, and she thought that the show was dated. And I said, it's a period piece. It's always going to be dated because it's set in that date. I love that. And this time, you know, when I saw it, I've seen it on tour before. I never saw it on the Broadway. But I was like, it, there is something a little dated about it, not just, the, um, not just the fact that it's a period piece stuck in, not, like, 1975 is the first act and 1978 is the second act. And um, there's something about those, those big uh, shows that came from London, like um, Miss Saigon and Phantom of the Opera and Les Mis, that they were these big epic things and they sort of invaded America back in the day, much like the Beatles did. And, um, you know, we don't necessarily have shows like that anymore. You know, there are still big shows, but um, there's, something, there's something sort of old-fashioned in a new-fashioned way of these shows from the 80s and early 90s and stuff. But anyway, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, but the show is by Claude Michel Schoenberg and Alan Boubil, um, with lyrics by Boubil and Richard Maltby Jr. And like I said, it's based on Puccini's story, and it's about a girl named Kim um, and a boy named Chris. And they meet, and he's a soldier, and she's working in, in this place where you can go and get girls, girls, girls. Oh, by the way, look, I also got, you'll love to see, I love to show the merchandise that they had at the theater. Here's my old Miss Saigon magnet from years ago. I love these old these older magnets that were sort of like a ceramic tile. And here's the new Miss Saigon. They do have a great logo, don't they, kids? With the helicopter and the little face. And see, the magnet's been updated and everything. But, um, and the show was beautiful. It's not one of my favorite shows, I must, I must say. Um... I like it. The night I saw it, I was very sleepy because I worked the early shift. And then I, I you know, I practically had to do um, a clockwork orange thing, you know, where they put the things and kept the guy's eyes open so they could torture him. 
and not that Miss Saigon was a torture by any means, but just to fight to stay awake in that first act was a chore. Now here's the playbill as I showed you, um, and you're like, why are you telling us about this show um, if you saw it two months ago? Well, the tour is still going on throughout North America, and I'll give you some of those dates and cities, but um, where are the pictures of the cast? I don't like when they don't have the picture of the cast in the program. Don't you all agree? But I was wise enough to uh, make some pictures of my own. Now these are from the current cast, these shots, and the current production, I should say. And yes, I saw a production uh, years ago that had just used the helicopter on the screen. It didn't have a real helicopter there, and this one did have a helicopter that actually flew and crashed through the roof of the theater. No, that didn't happen. But, I mean, it, it did, it was amazing that the way they used the helicopter in this. It's always been their big chandelier moment, like in Phantom of the Opera, and the chandelier would come down at the end of Act One, and the, the, um, the sequence with the helicopter in this is very effective. That's Chris and Kim. That's the engineer. And, um, you know, um, sometimes that character is not annoying. I mean, he is sort of annoying, but sometimes it depends on the actor that you get, I guess. And he has that great song, The American Dream, with the lyrics like, What's that I smell in the air? The American dream, sweet as a sweet in Bel Air. The American dream, and it goes on and on. I love the lyric, girls can buy tits by the pair. The American dream, bald people think they'll grow hair. The American dream, but um, that's one of the fun songs. But you know, this time, I, I was a little annoyed by that character, I must say. And no offense to the actor. Everybody's very good. Um, and um, the Chris and the Kim, they're all good. Um, our engineer was played by Red Concepcion. Uh, Kim played Emily, was played by Emily Batista. And at certain performances, Myra Malloy, I think we had Emily Batista. And, um, and Chris is played by Anthony Festa on this tour. And I must tell you that the production is directed by ba, 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 Lawrence Connor, musical staging and choreography by Bob Avion. So, um, it's always nice to give, to give, um, credit where credit is due. Um... But like I said, you know, it's a beautiful production. It's very big. The audience loved it. Um, at the Pantages, I was up in the balcony, and it's a little cramped up there sometimes. And you know, I'm losing weight, and it's still cramped. So um, I saw Blue Man Group the other day at the Pantages, and we were down in the orchestra, and we were off to the, um, the on the, the left-hand side of the orchestra. And it was a little more roomy down there. Um, so I was squished during Miss Saigon, and I was sleepy. But I, I enjoyed it, and I don't know if it's a show that I really need to see a lot of more times in my life. But, um, but you should if you haven't seen it, and even if you've seen it once, you might want to check out this tour, because this is the definitive tour, I think. You've got great sets great choreography, um, performances. It's a good solid show. Now, I had printed up all these cities. We've already closed in Los Angeles, as I told you. We've been to Denver and to Tempe, Arizona. I think my friend um, Grace just saw it when it was in Arizona. Grace Jasmine, you know, of the Masher thing. Um, but you can see it from October 1st through the through the 13th in Costa Mesa, California. Go on their website and see these, check out these other cities. But Salt Lake City after that, 
Spokane, Washington, Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon, San Jose. I love seeing how what the path is of these tours. Fort Worth, Texas, it's going to be there December 3rd through the 8th. So I know some people are going to be getting early Christmas presents of shows. Um, Kansas City, Missouri, Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's going to be December 31st through January 5th. So I bet some Oklahomans, is that the word, Oklahomans? Um, they're going to be getting some tickets for Christmas and Hanukkah. Um, to see Miss Saigon. Theater tickets are always a good gift, people. Um, San Antonio, Texas. Oh, Paolo, by the way, got me um, a gift certificate to the Pantages Theater for my birthday. So I'm going to get a ticket to Anastasia. So, yes, people, remember, the theater is a wonderful gift for children and adults alike. Um, did I say Oklahoma City, Oklahoma? That's where it's going to be in January 14th through the 19th at the Civic Center Music Hall. New Orleans, maybe my cousin Debbie can go. Um, that's it, end of January. Um, Knoxville, Tennessee, and of course, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it's going to be in February. Louisville, Kentucky, and it's going to be at the Kentucky Center there. I thought that said the Kennedy Center. And then Appleton, um, Wisconsin. So those are just the ones that I wrote down. But there's a full list of the cities um, that you can see on the website. And of course, um, it has great songs in it, including a song played on a solo saxophone, a crazy sound, a lonely sound, a cry that tells us love goes on and on. That's that song, The Last Night of the World, and I love how the music goes. Dun, 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 Sorry, I've had too much coffee this morning. Um, so yes, go see Miss Saigon, treat yourself, um, and, um, and check out a classic. Like I said, not my favorite, but this is a good production. And it's a wonderful production for me to end with in my Miss Saigon experience. They should turn that into a movie. I think that would make a really good movie now that we're getting, um, we're getting um, Cats. And um, next year we're getting a new West Side Story from Steven Spielberg. We've got Wicked coming at the end of 2021. Um, what else? They're going to eventually do Dear Evan Hansen. Um, something next year that I'm really looking forward to. Now I can't remember. But well, we'll talk about that later. Um, okay. Goodbye, everybody. Um, have a great week. Sorry, this was such a delayed, a delayed review. But better late than never. Okay. Goodbye.